Hey folks, and welcome to the Flowgrade Show. This is a video podcast about high performers and their methods to get into the flow state. And so far I've had experts from many different fields on here already, including Bulletproof Coffee inventor Dave Asprey, meditation expert Emily Fletcher, CrossFit legend Kelly Starrett, or even Hollywood actor Brandon Routh. If you are interested in any of these episodes, you can find and download all of them for free on iTunes and on flowgrade.com. Today, my best guest is Andy Nilo, and Andy is not only a really good friend of mine, but he's also a professional model, an actor who was even once on the show Entourage, and the founder of the up-and-coming skincare company Alitura Naturals. So Andy is really knowledgeable about skin and skincare, and I'm really excited today to talk to him about methods to improve skin, to radiate health, and to look your best. So enjoy this episode with Andy Nilo. Andy, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, man. This is, uh, it's cool to be here. It's such a trip, you're out in Germany and I'm out in uh, Northern California right now. It's I know, I know. I know, and just a couple of months ago, we were seeing each other in, in California for the second time, yeah. actually. We met for the first time last year at the conference. Yeah. And uh, I wanna, just introduce you and, and give you the opportunity to tell your story because I think that's just an amazing story. And to all the listeners, you have to understand uh, that in case you're just listening and watching, that Andy is a really good looking guy. So he's a professional model. <laughs> <laughs> this California tanned bow, you would say. And, <laughs> no, and man. Andy, I heard also the story, you know, I, I called some people up and, and they told me that you were at one point an aspiring actor and a model and then all of a sudden something happened. And I think this story, nobody can obviously tell it better than you. So why don't you tell me that story? Well, uh, yeah, so uh, March 20, 2011, I was hit and run over consecutively by two cars, uh, two SUVs, actually, a uh, westbound heading vehicle, and I was hit into a lane, uh, the eastbound lane, and run over by an eastbound heading vehicle. Um, broke seven ribs. I shattered my jaw. I lost consciousness, so I don't. luckily I don't remember that. A lot of people uh, in traumatic crashes and accidents like that, you know, are just, you know, have, you know, their nightmares about it for the rest of their life. I'm very lucky that I don't really think about it because I don't, you know, I lost consciousness upon impact from the first car. So right. I'm lucky right. uh, not only to be alive, but that it's not, you know, it's not rocking me every day, you know, thinking about it. And I don't have any like brain injuries. I'm very grateful for that. So yeah, I woke up in ICU in Cedar sinai in Los Angeles with a uh, bone exposed through the bottom of my mouth. Uh, you know, I had uh, best friends uh, wow. in the hospital room with me. And, you know, they were just, just rocked both of them. And when I woke up, I was on, you know, whatever it was more for some very powerful drugs. And I, I just, uh, I was like, what's going on? And they're like, no, no, don't talk. Don't talk. Cause they, they didn't want the particles of my jaw to be moving around because they wanted to eventually connect that with two titanium plates and then let the bone grow, uh, regrow. But oh, wow. I, um, yeah, I'll never forget that, that look on their face. Uh, the look on their faces just, uh, just mortified, you know? And finding out that I was in, in you know, intensive, intensive care unit, and then finding out what happened, you know, it was, um, man, yeah, just I, I don't think about it too much, but these podcasts are great because uh, it just takes me back and, and, and um, gives me a heat. I'm mean, talking about perspective, jeez, man, I've come a long way, man. It's, it's a trip, but yeah. So I uh, broke seven ribs, collapsed my lung, had had a catheter chest tube to seep out all the the fluids that were in that were accumulating in my lungs and yeah so for, for someone who uh, relies so much on his on his looks at, at least at that point in life you know now you're an, a successful entrepreneur as well but how did that make you feel when when you noticed wow i might not look the same ever again um it, it was a combination. It was like 50, 50 of being extremely grateful to be alive. And then it was also, you know, that's a good point. You know, I, I know what it sounds like to, to people going, Oh, you know, worried about your looks or whatever, but that was, you know, if you're not happy with what you see in the mirror, they wouldn't give me a mirror to, to look at. I wanted to see how bad it was. And they would, they would, they literally would not. 
Um, and so that's, that kind of was, uh, was, <laughs> was frustrating. And then when I finally did, it was just the biggest, um, uh, you know, your heart sinks to, to the floor and, uh, it's, yeah, it's brutal. I wouldn't wish that upon anybody, obviously, but, um, yeah, not only was that how I made my living, but it was how I like generated my happiness. You know, I loved uh, taking care of myself because before that I had bad skin and I counteracted that through just a passion for ingredients and skincare. But once this happened, I realized I just, it was not, like I said, not only was that how I made my living, but it was just what made me feel good. And then, so it was just a really dark, dark year of recovery. But I, you know, in that you, I, I just, you know, I had nothing else to do. I didn't want to go to, I didn't want to leave the house. I went to whole new grocery stores. Seriously. I went to whole new grocery stores because people, my jaw was wired shut and my teeth were nubs. I had gravel in my teeth. It was just, you know, my whole situation, my jaw was out to here. It was just, it was people would try to look me in the eyes, but their eyes would dart right down to my jaw. And I saw that. Yeah. It's just, it was just, um, it's, it's, it's extremely uncomfortable, made you super self-conscious, uh, and insecure about things. But then again, I, you know, I've, I've had this battle upstairs going, look, dude, you're alive. A lot of people don't survive those, those, uh, that, you know, things like that. So I had that going as well. And that was, uh, not only my mantra, but I had a, a very good, uh, support system with my family and friends. And How they, so you actually I just heard that you were already into skincare though before the accident, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did de you actually already develop a product then, or did you just? No, no, I didn't. I didn't have a product. I just had this thing. Uh, when I was in college, I was using things like Neutrogena, uh, Clean and Clear, Clearacel, Noxema, but those sick Dove. And it was just, I would always have some type of irritation on my face. There would always be something. It was because my face was constantly going through some type of like a, a detox, fighting away all those chemicals and those, those uh, counterproductive uh, ingredients that were irritating my skin. I have super sensitive skin. And uh, those ingredients were just making it worse. And my diet was pretty bad, but... And my teammates, you know, I played baseball and my teammates would, would you know how it is, you know, they, they pick apart your weaknesses and what bothers you. I mean, and, uh, it's okay. But, uh, I, uh, I just figured out a way to, it, it may, you know, it, I wanted to, you know, having bad skin was, was the main reason for yeah, that. You know, I can relate to that. Cause I know, you know, it's one of the, the things that I haven't been really able to hack, uh, and, uh, I hate it because sometimes you just break out, you know, in the most inconvenient times just before yeah. a, an important date oh. or a presentation or meeting with someone. <laughs> and uh, I, I never know, uh, is it, you know, the diet, did I, did I eat something? Is it the stress? Is it just because <laughs> it's my yeah. kar karma in that, in, in that days, in, in that day, on, the, on that day? You never know. It's different things it's it's so many different things so I, I broke down to this the science of not only uh, ingredient rosters and ingredient decks but i i started my first bentonite clay mask probably when i was 21 and i'm 34 now gonna be 35 so for, yeah 14 14 years ago i remember and it just it the bentonite on its own is it's good but it's really harsh and it just dries it up it increases a lot of circulation to the surface of the skin, pulls out a lot of impurities, and reconditions the skin and kind of eats up that irritation, whatever you have going on, that infection. That's what essentially what it is. If it's a zit, it's an infection. If it's a bacteria infection. But if there's also things like ingrown hairs, there's, like you said, stress, diet, over overdoing it on sugars or things that kind of irritate you or your body rejects, you're, it's going to show in your skin. So I just, I mean... So take, take me through the process when you, like, how do you develop your, or how did you develop the clay mask? So I was buying, uh, by the way, to all the listeners, the clay mask, this is this, if you're, if you're watching, uh, this is what Andy has developed. It's an amazing product. I use it all the time right now. Uh, and it's pretty much a, a mud mask that you put on and you let it dry and then you wash it off. But we're going to go through the process a little later. But now I'm interested in, uh, first of all, yeah, how you came up with that, what ingredients are in it and how you put them together in order to make that product. Yeah. So, so 14 years ago, I started this and I was buying this jar of it and I figured it's one ingredient. Why don't I just, you know, search reputable sources and buy that in bulk rather than just going to Whole Foods and paying more for it. So I tried so many different sources, uh, probably 
five or six different sources of just calcium bentonite. And it's really cool because with clays, they're, you know, Wyoming, Nevada, I mean, Colorado, I mean, there's so many, Oregon, there's so many different areas that, that um, are abundant in bentonite clay. And I, in looking on these websites, I would find other clays like Rasul, pyrophyllite, um, Montmorillonite, uh, so many different clays, and it's just. But that's the things; they're all minerals, and so you're escorting those minerals onto your skin, which is your largest organ. It's like feeding it. It's like you got to treat it like another mouth, right? And so, with that, I mean, being so loaded in things like silica, uh, which is which, uh, in, in these minerals that your body uh, are uh, gets depleted in as we age, and with toxins and and just just through daily activity, um, you're escorting it right back into the system and absorbing natural minerals, not synthetic minerals or man-made. You know, these are from the earth, and I, that's just that's just what I think our body responds best to. And so I would go on uh, these websites and just experiment. You know, I, I never had an intention of making a product. It was just my own little creative outlet. I'd be in my back room throwing them all together. I mean, no measurement whatsoever. I used the same little uh, tool and I would mix them all together. It kind of looked like it, you know, uh, you know, uh, looked right in the bowl. And then I would add apple cider vinegar, my favorite essential oils. Um, but it, the one thing that was ex- consistent every single time was a flush, uh, radiant appearance and just an overall sense of well-being. And that's from the toxin removal. And it was just full-on detox and then reconditioning in your skin. I mean, what better way to start the day, right? Right, yeah. And- but I have to say, I tried it with apple cider vinegar. And mm-hmm. it, it just... It smells horrible, though. Oh yeah, right. no, definitely. It, it's uh, in, in a lot of the spas that carry it, they have to counteract that smell. And you can with with essential oils. You can with um, uh, things like sweet orange oil, lemon oil, frankincense, clary sage, sea buckthorn. I'm actually making an activated oil blend uh, with ozonated olive oil as a carrier to to carry through those properties of these other oils. I mean, it's just something that I am obsessed with. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, but let's, know, let's it's go just, back to the to the recipe. Yeah. Piece. So, other okay. than the clay, is the clay actually one ingredient, or is it does it does the clay contain several ingre- different ingredients? No, so, so there are four different clays. There's kaolin clay, uh, calcium bentonite clay, pyrophyllite clay, and rasul clay. Rasul okay. is this deep, uh, rich red clay from Morocco, which really um, increases circulation to the surface of the skin. Uh, pyrophyllite seventy over seventy percent silica. Um, kale and clay is a nice, well, it's a little more coarse, so it provides that exfoliation, exfoliating, um, property to it. And then also that night is one of the most heavily researched clays on the planet. And, um, it's just extremely nutrient dense. A lot of spot treatments carry just that night, but I want in Russell. Russell is great for the hair. A uh, lot. There are a lot of hair treatments with just Russell and like say Tamano or Argon oil. A lot of women love it, but, um, I don't want to, I don't want to say that because I, if, if women have like colored hair or men or I don't, you know, it's, it's, I put it in my hair as well because I just believe that, um, that circulation created to the scalp and those follicles were, you know, in the mineral density of these clays and the things, the other ingredients like the kelp, the colostrum, pearl powder, vitamin C, American ginseng. I mean, it's just, um, I, I, I had nothing else to do. So I would just research spot treatments. And I also experimented with things that I've never seen used topically, like the colostrum, like the pearl powder, things that I was ingesting for my internal, um, uh, cleansing and, and nutrient um, density as well, and also growth factors like IGF one that the first six hour milking colostrum is so rich in. But it just uh, I just felt activity when I would make little pace of these, and I would try these ingredients on their own. A lot of things didn't work. I bought a ton of other extracts and powders, and uh, these were just like my nine uh, dream team ingredients that stuck out. And then over time, I mean, this took a while. I, I fine tuned. Uh, the measurements of the things like the ascorbic acid in the beginning, I was using too much in the beginning. I was using twice as much of the kelp powder because it's so loaded in things like um, sodium alginate, vitamin A, C, K. It's a really good topical cleanser. That's very popular in many spa treatments, um, the kelp powder. So, but I was using too much and believe me, you think it smells now, you should have smelled it when it was double the amount of the kelp powder. But no, I mean, I think the, the powder now uh, I'm used to the smell that actually actually associated with something positive now. But when I add apple cider vinegar instead of water, then I think, you know, people around me notice like, what, what is that smell in your apartment? And uh, oh, <laughs> I have to try the essential oils now, I think. Funny story about that. I mean, you can imagine how much 
beta testing I did in my apartment or do in my apartment. I'm still testing. I mean, I, I walk around with this mask on for, you know, when I'm doing emails, I mean, I, I, I leave it on for a long time, sometimes hours. Um, because it just, I mean, it's just, you're really getting that, that circulation going, that constriction of the blood vessels and the capillaries. You leave it on I for mean, hours. Well, because I'm I, I work from home and I have you know I, I can afford to. Ah, because I I usually I thought that it's best to like just let it dry and then get it off, but you can actually leave it on for. You can, you can. I do. Um, I did it this morning. Um, I think the personally, I think the longer you leave it on, the more constriction you're going to get, and you're just feeding that area. Now, I mean, that, yeah, I I I do it all the time. I do it three or four times a week and then I do it. And it's the first thing I do in the morning and I'll leave it on till, you know, it's, I'll go straight to my emails. It's the best thing to do. Uh, it's the best way to let it dry while I'm working or moving around my, my apartment for, yeah, at least hour, two hours. I mean, that's, that's what I do. And then and it, works, it works incredible. So you came up with that powder and let's say, let's jump ahead a little bit. So you, you found the perfect recipe and uh, what was the next step? When was, sort of the, the point in time when you realized I'm onto something, this is something that, that can help a lot of people. I, I picked up a friend of mine from the airport a couple weeks into my recovery and she was stunned at, uh, because it really, I mean, it was, the scarring right here was pretty nasty, but the abrasions and the gashes uh, were almost completely healed. It looked like nothing until I started talking because my jaw was wired shut and my teeth were little nubs. But uh, yeah, she was like, well, what did you do? Uh, it was it was a, a genuine double take. And that was, uh, I was like, well, I'm, I'm doing this mask uh, every other day to help regenerate and condition my skin and, and, and help just heal my, my abrasions and, and help ex hopefully accelerate the, the, the healing of my scar. I mean, in the emergency room, normally, ideally, you would have got it stitched up um, very, you know, very fine stitching, but this was just like an absolute thick chop job right here, um, mm. along the side where my, can see my anything is. right now. Well, yeah, it's, believe me, I, 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 I stayed very diligent with my routine on how to heal this thing. You want to talk about, and that you should have seen, it was not only, uh, longer, much longer. It was at least twice as long, but it was, it was a dent. And it was also, you could see the, the the areas of where they stitched in the the stitches like the very thick uh stitching that they use it was like railroad tracks coming up and so i just stayed diligent with exfoliating that area and then feeding it um in with things like cacao butter and the essential oil blend one by one i just made pace with butters and oils based on my research i mean i i mean it's it's still I, i'm constantly all day doing r d in my head and it's um it's clearly, I mean, it's just, I mean, I found my passion. I mean, if I had to get hit by a couple cars to give me direction in life, that's what I needed to do because I, I found what I love. It's all, I mean, it's not all I think about, but it's, it's definitely <laughs> the majority of what I think about. And I mean, I'm all, I'm just trying to, you know, constantly think about other things like uh, cleansers, scrubs. I mean, now I have an activated oil blend that's going to be coming out soon. I mean, just, it's what I love because I've been at the rock bottom of not only having bad skin, but also I've, you know, built up better skin. And then I've been, had it taken all away from me again and then had to regenerate it and build it back again. So yeah, that's it's, it's, yeah. And it. Now you, you're this skin expert and self-taught and I, I love talking to self-taught experts because i think usually when you're self-taught then that uh, originates out of pa passion somehow you know you yeah. like you you're you're scratching your own itch in a way and yeah. uh, that's why i think there, there's so many people out there that have issues with their skin because skin is not only you know something that shows health but also gives you confidence yes. it uh, it it just makes you feel a lot better about yourself. You're you're more confident going into any room with with strangers, with people. It increases yeah. your quality of life in so many ways. And what now, after having done that for for several years, what have been the major problems? First of all, that people have, and that now with your knowledge, you can solve quite easily. It's yeah, no, it's it's exactly what you said. I mean, having good skin, you, you treat others uh, much better. I mean, just the energy you bring to every 
um, you know, what a situation where it's just meeting someone, whether it's an interview, you're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to treat others better. You're going to create a better energy environment uh, wherever you go. I mean, it's just a direct correlation. You feel better about yourself. You're going to treat others better. And on the flip side, if you don't, I mean, it's just, you know, sometimes it's not all, you know, a hundred percent perfect all the time. Right. Right. uh, That's why, you know, you, you check yourself and, um, and you, you maintain that. And luckily having, you know, a good, just feeling good about yourself and skin is number one. I mean, it's the first thing you see when you wake up, you look in your mirror, splash some water on your face, or whatever. If you're not happy with what you see, it's going to start your day off on the wrong foot. And that's just how I operate. I don't, I don't take any, you know, I want to do it naturally. You know, I want to, I want to generate that good serotonin, that dopamine in my head. And, and it's, uh, through thing, through diet, nutrition, and skincare. And, and it usually works out. You stay diligent and consistent with a good routine. You're going to bring that energy, that good positive energy consistently to others. I mean, there's, there's, I'm a, you know, perfectly a, a good example of that. Um, I think so. It's uh, yeah, it's like you said, it's, it's, um, you know, skin, skincare is, is huge for that. Is it, how, yeah. how can people, let's say, take other than now with, with the mask, what, what are the major elements for good skin? Is there something that everyone can do right away to improve skin? So I would figure out what, you know, diet is huge. Um, I, I don't do, I don't do grains. I definitely limited my sugar intake. If I do, it's, it's usually honey based or maybe coconut palm sugar. Very rarely. Uh, I don't do any starches. I mean, outside of sweet potato, um, see what else i mean it's just you know with guys ingrown hairs are a huge culprit for irritation i mean you get that hair and usually it's a razor i use a single edge straight razor from uh uh merker with germany actually i believe it's from germany and then i use a just a fresh blade every time i shave because that was a huge culprit of mine is just getting that hair you know things like the mach 3 with three razors Sometimes that hair will get trapped and then escorted right back into your skin. And now you got this, you got to wait till the hair grows out and your skin pushes it out. And that can be weeks. So that's another big one for guys out there. You got to watch out for those ingrown hairs. How, how do you do that? How do you, uh, like once you have an ingrown hair, can you, is there a quick fix? Well, there is. You got to get a really good pair of tweezers. And, but then it, right off the bat, there really isn't because you got to watch out for this because with those tweezers, I know this because believe me, any little red mark for, with me is going to be there for at least a week. I, I just know that at least. And so with the ingrown hairs, you, sometimes you, you just got to let it wait a couple of days until it kind of reaches the surface. Uh, and then just get a mere really good pair of tweezers and you can kind of pluck it out. I use a mask to spot treat it and kind of eat up that irritation and that redness and that the pearl powder is amazing to kind of bleach out, mildly bleach out that, uh, the redness and that, um, that irritation. But, uh, yeah, I'll spot treat it with the mask. The mask for me is, is my, I mean, it's just like my go-to. I mean, how often do you do it? The mask? I do it every other day, but if I have something going on where I have to be re- up in the early, like on conference, up in the early in the morning at conferences, here Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I'm in the booth and you want to be your best example of yourself to people coming by and wanting to know about your product, I'll do it every day. It's, it's, it's not harsh to the point, like say like a coffee scrub or I'm seeing all these like coffee ground masks and stuff. It's just really harsh on the skin. I mean, you're beating up your skin constantly with these coarse, coarse, uh, granules. I mean, with, with the mask, it's the harshest, the most, um, intense ingredient as far as like, uh, granule part- particle size would be the kaolin clay and that's actually really soft i mean it's a very fine powder and it's just as long as you're gentle uh in the shower i like to rinse it off but as long as you're letting the water rinse it off and being very aware of the capillaries underneath your eyes that are extremely delicate i i mean i if you're really in a pinch and you say you have a nice presentation that you have to do every other day or every day i'll do it every day i mean there are times where i've done it five times in a week five, six times in a week, especially with this cold weather coming up, it's a great way to uh, feel refreshed and look refreshed and in a time that is so dry and harsh, um, you know, the environment can be really harsh on our skin. So I'll do it every day sometimes. I mean, it's extremely effective and consistent. Now for someone, you know, a lot of people, they have these impurities here uh, on the forehead or on the chin. Uh, Oftentimes I saw that. And I've recently actually heard that a lot of girls that have on their chin 
uh, acne that that could be related to the liver not really detoxifying correctly and yeah. uh, that that's related to diet again and to i think the hormone levels and balance of of, yeah. of nutrition primarily uh do you know anything about that is that absolutely uh digestion is huge um women have it tough with with the whole you know like you said hormonal um issues and uh so teens uh, i get contacted all the time about i mean when i was when i was a kid i was just burgers fries i mean pizza you name it and sweets and i'm, I'm asking uh these parents like well, well how's their diet not only are they going through sometimes you know just growing into their own body whether it's hormones and going through puberty and things like that um But it, it, you know, diet is also a huge culprit and, and can, it just shows in your skin. Nutrition is huge. I mean, really solving those gut issues and, and maintaining that good uh, gut bacteria through things, things like uh, cultured vegetables. I mean, I go through fermented vegetables, a bag of that every other day. So I must go through, yeah, three or four. I use uh, farmhouse culture. It's like, it's like a kraut. And um, it just really um, adds to that good live bu um, gut bacteria that helps digest everything that you put in it. And if you're putting in great foods, it's just gonna you're just like adding fuel to the fire. Um, whether it's proteins, good fats, uh, I intermittent fast. I use a lot of Chinese herbs. Bulletproof collagen has been huge. Gelatin, um, just maintaining that elasticity mm -hmm. on the surface of your skin um, is huge. What so you put on it. It's a moisturizer. That's that's very um, important as well. I mean, every single thing. There's so much that goes into it. Yeah, there's a lot. But that's why I think what if if you had to give let's say five pieces of advice, uh, and let's say the mask is one of them, so we have four left. What would, could you recommend yeah. to people? Four things, and it could be anything nutrition related, or a moisturizer, or uh, washing the face once per day, or something like that. But what would be a five-step plan that people can use in order to improve their skin, like, let's say, starting today? Okay. I would dissect. Um, I would. I use Evan Healy uh, Blue Lavender Cleansing Milk, but I would find a good cleanser that works with your skin. You got to test these things out. I found one. And usually when you find one, it's <laughs> you'll stick with it for years. But that's what I use. Now, I like to steam up the face, open up the pores, and then I'll apply the cleanser. I'll, I'll let it sit. Maybe I'll brush my teeth or whatever, walk around to really absorb those really calming ingredients. You got to dissect ingredient rosters. People, all, you know, a lot of companies will add fragrance, alcohols, things that are harsh on the skin. And you've got to dissect, I mean, just a nice, gentle, um, I'm happy to provide examples in, in the footnotes or whatever. Yeah, cool. Really, Let's what what has worked for me um, as far as just clean, organic skincare. I mean, you, you, can, you can make your own. I mean, that's, that's what I did. And um, a good, nice, light, um, uh, effective moisturizer following up, uh, you know, cleansing of the face. Uh, so, yeah, after you wash that off, I like to give it a, co a cold rinse to close the pores and I'll apply my moisturizer that I use but there are a lot of really good moisturizers out there as well the most important thing is staying away from those high produced um you know heavily fragranced moisturizers that really cause irritation and put you in a fog your skin is your largest organ I mean that close to your brain and that uh it's just you're going to eat up and, and it's going to be escorted right into your bloodstream whatever those ingredients are I mean you got to you know like I said earlier you got to treat it like another mouth I really won't um put okay, so we have we have cleanser and we have moisturizer and you have to find the one sort of that's working for you with the right ingredients. Yeah, in yeah, test it, test it out. I'm happy to, you know, list some of my favorite brands. I, I use my own right now as far as moisturizer. Yeah, we put that we put that in the footnotes. And I'm trying your your moisturizer uh, as well. I haven't really done a lot. Like I've tried the clay mask now extensively. But is it also suitable for every skin type or are there certain skin types that your products are better for? So I, it's, I, I just made one moisturizer based on my skin, which is a combination of oil. I mean, it just depends on the environment. I've, I've gotten 
uh, very good feedback for people who have oily skin because the, the royal jelly kind of seeps out some of that moisture but reconditions at the same time. If that makes sense. I mean, it's extremely healing, but there are a lot of, you know, German blue chamomile, ylang ylang, sea buckthorn, carrot seed, olive oil to carry that through. I mean, it's just everything in there has an absolute purpose. It's It's to the point where you can always add more. I didn't want it to be too oily. You know, you're at dinner, you know, constantly wiping your forehead with some of my other moisturizers that I used in the past. And using an all natural, I mean, mine's 95.4% certified organic ingredients. So a lot of those are the the oils that I'm using. Things like calendula as well can be really overly oily. I mean, it took 22 tweaks to get it where it's at. But we really like the consistency where you can always add more. But it's not overly uh, greasy for, you know, for that reason. Um, so for that, you know, with that said, I mean, people, I haven't really, I've had people with oily skin who are, you know, that's, that it's worked well with and I have people with dry skin. That's, it's, it's, that's a good question. It's, it's, it's worked well for both, uh, oily combination, all, you know, dry skin as well. All right. Good. Okay. So we have, cl- we have cleanser, we have moisturizer, Number three, maybe something nutrition related. What Absolutely. I mean, you talked about grains. Is is there has there been any one you know food item that you think causes a lot of skin problems in people in general? That's pretty personal uh, on the individual. I would, huh? I mean, when I when I overdo it with sugar, it's uh, the circulate. I can I can kind of see it around my eye area. Uh, grains, unorganic grains, things like um, you know, uh, uh, wheat flour, for, for whatever reason, kind of causes a little an inflammatory reaction on me. Mm-hmm. And inflammation is, for me, it's, it's shown immediately in my face. Uh, so I would stay away from that. I would really stay as nutrient and mineral dense as possible. Vitamins A, C, and K are huge. I like to supplement with D3 to help escort those, vitamin D3. Mm-hmm. But I mean, things like vitamin A, C, and K, uh, and you can get that through vegetables like kale. I, I get, I do a lot of kraut, I do a lot of sweet potato, a lot of kale, a lot of broccoli. Um, That's awesome advice. Okay. Great, okay, so we have Pretty much uh, five, I would say. We have the mask, the cleanser, moisturizer, stay away from sugar and grains, and then take A, C, K, D3, and, and, you know, either in vegetables or supplements. Well, I would get it through food. I love to get my my vitamins and as much of it through food. Um, And then one more, the sauna is just huge. I love the sauna. I love the sauna too. Yeah, actually it was today. (laughs) Yeah. No, I, 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 my mom and I are going to go to the gym after this and, uh, definitely going to hit the sauna. So I, yeah, it's just, it, it really, it, it, it not only opens up the pores and I have this whole treatment that I'll do. I'll take a 50 milligram niacin, uh, I'm six, three, one ninety five. So maybe if, if, if people just, just base it on your body size, some people 20, maybe start off slow, but uh, give yourself 30 minutes, maybe do it before you work out and then hit the sauna to really, uh, get that lactic acid flowing after a workout, and then it the niacin will, will take uh, pull out those toxins and impurities to the surface of the skin and escort them out. Um, and then I'll leave the sauna, apply my moisturizer. I read, I, uh, I heard a centenarian speaking about this a while back, and you're escorting good essential oils. You know, I use my moisturizer. Uh, things like cacao butter, it has uh, natural caffeine and really good uh, fatty acids that are escorted right back into those op- those pores that were just open. And then uh, it's just a back and forth, reapply back into the sauna. I'll probably stay in there 15, 15 minutes, and then I'll go and then close the pores with a cold rinse. It's just something I do three times a week. It's just uh, extremely effective. Can you do the mask with the sauna together? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's one of, if you have an own, per, I mean, there's no way any gym's going to let you walk into a, a sauna with a mask on. I, I don't even want to try it, but I, I know people that have their own infrared sauna at home. They, it's like their favorite thing to do. A friend of mine, Mary, uh, she has her own infrared sauna. So you would she would put it on the floor, the mask. Yeah, and yeah, she gets it to the point where it's just starting to constrict. Then she'll go in the sauna and it opens it up. So you're getting that constriction and the pores starting to open. It's... I've done it uh, a couple times 
that's the best. That's probably the best uh, treatment. She actually offers it in her uh, in her um, med spa. To it's like this whole treatment of the mask and, uh, and infrared sauna. It's unbelievable. But Very I mean, cool. some Very people cool. don't have the luxury of having a sauna in their house or. But if you're able to wear the mask in a sauna, get it to the point of where it's just starting to constrict and dry. Hop in the sauna. If you, I mean, with the mask on. With the mask on. All right. You're gonna have a little bit of. Well, I don't. It may start to flick, flake off a little bit. You know, it, as far as clean up, um, that may be an issue. But I'll tell you what. There, that's number one, the most effective treatment. I'm talking lasers, microderm, chemical peel, enzyme treatment. There's no better treatment that I've ever done in my entire life than mask infrared sauna period amazing yeah so, no it's unbelievable maybe one more skin thing and then i want to talk about some other topics with you as well sure what uh, about when you have um, i mean the, i have a, a specific question for you which yeah. is you know this one annoying pimple that you might have do you have any recommendation to get rid of of an annoying pimple quickly bentonite's amazing stuff i mean what it just it If you bentonite, you said right? Bentonite, calcium bentonite clay. I mean, it's just you, and it's a little. You can spot treat those zits. Apple cider vinegar it may smell bad. Now, if you're spot treating it, you're not going to get. Uh, you're not going to, you know, smell up your whole apartment or whatever. If you're just doing a little bit of a paste and then applying wherever it is, um, that's that's. Uh, where do you get that? When do I? No, where uh, can is there? Anything that can you make it yourself, or do you have to have a specific product? Because I think in Germany I, right I, now, you know, I don't want to keep up. In, I mean, I use my my mask, but if, if there's there's oh, the so mask, much. okay, the the, ba the mask actually contains the the calcium bentonite clay. Oh, absolutely, definitely. Ah, green okay. clay. I mean, it's 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 from Nevada. It's I mean, it's food grade. It's unbelievable. But uh, that's so that's what I would do is just make a little paste of my mask, apple cider vinegar, and then just put it on wherever you're uh, wherever you're experiencing irritation or it's my buddy yeah my, my buddy uh did it the other day it was gone within 24 hours or just ex you know significantly reduced man i love that this is i'm gonna write up an, an article with with all this advice and, and make it a little more you know structured so people can really see where to find yeah. what the ingredients are called uh, because i think that someone hearing that for the first time they might be okay they're talking about calcium betonite clay what is that so just that uh, all the listeners know this is this can be found in the footnotes yeah it pulls out that what it is it's an, essentially an infection right and infection of uh counteracting bacteria with your own with your own bacteria and it's and it's or it's a uh, your body's going through a little bit of a detox and exposing it to the surface of your skin trying to rid your body of that toxin now what the bentonite does or you know my mask whatever it you, you it eats up that bacteria it eats up that infection i mean you feel the activity the enzymes in the apple cider vinegar i mean i like to use raw apple cider vinegar i mean with the the mother culture in it that just it just um disintegrates that that uh, infection that's what it does and so it's uh yeah that's that's probably the number one you see all these uh salicylic acid uh, it just i think our body can respond through uh, ingredients that are from the earth uh, and i think that's the best way to do it all right very cool thank you andy hey, you're welcome. all right now i want to switch gears a little bit and you know this is called the flow grade show so uh whatever i do pretty much i I'm, i'm testing it against how much it gets you into flow so you know everything we do pretty much has to be flow grade you know like there's a grade coffee we call it flow grade uh, in order yeah. to get you into flow and so i want to find out from you you're a biohacker and you're uh, not only into skincare but you keep in shape and you you eat well and so on but now i want to know Apart from that, what for you personally is an effective flow trigger? Like, how do you really get into that zone where, you know, your ego shuts off, where time dilutes, where you're at your highest performance level? Oh, music. It, music, I, I did my routine, essentially. It's consistent. Every single day I do the same thing. And, uh, you know, I wake up, as soon as I wake up, I'll do, I'll do something physical. With me, it's push-ups. I'll go... And then I'll to failure. That gets uh, the blood flowing, and then I'll go into the kitchen and make my morning tonic, which is heavily 
Uh, it's, it's a lot of anti-inflammatory herbs, things like turmeric, ginger. I heard about your tonic. Jordan uh, told me that you have a tonic and he might not be willing to share the, the recipe, he said, but, but maybe uh -huh. you do. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's a lot. I mean, it's so many different things. That's one thing I need to optimize is the time that I take to, to put that together. But it's kind of, it's therapeutic for me. And it, that little ding, ding, ding on the side of the blender, it's like, it's a little, it makes me, I don't know, it's kind of, yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's calming. But it's, it's, it's something that you drink, actually, right, the tonic? Oh, tonic. yeah, absolutely. I'll add a... Hoshiru, Gynostemma, American ginseng, Shizandra, I'll include all this. Um, I mean, you have to ask, write that to me because I think I might not even be able to spell some of that. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, definitely. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot, but it's, it's what I did after my accident to, to purify my blood, to build that blood, circulate that blood around my system, rid my body of the impurities from all the anti, anti, uh, antibiotics that was taken. I mean, there, there's studies out there that say like a single, um, cycle of antibiotics will stick with you for a year. I was on so many an antibiotics that just kill your cells, good and bad. And, and I was just in this fog. I was in such a lazy state. And I talked to a Chinese, several Chinese herbalists that got me on this, not only frame builder to help, um, my body cells react and get back and cleanse to where they were before the accident, but um, to, to rid my body with, uh, of impurities and, and also heal my inflammation naturally, not using things like, um, you know, Advil, Tylenol or anything like that. So I would, yeah, I just, I just made these combinations that's constantly growing. You know, super nutrient dense um, superfoods like uh, that's I said super twice, uh, spirulina, turmeric, uh, arginine, glutamine, lysine, uh, proline, uh, glycine. I mean, there's so many different things. I'm actually going to be making a supplement because I realize that people are interested. In this. Yeah, I mean, you got to share that. Share the yeah, good no, stuff. Definitely. And, and also, I'm gonna. It doesn't. It tastes. It's brutal. It's it's really bad. But uh, you know, so we're gonna throw it in a capsule and make it available. And you know, obviously, a lot easier to. Uh, oh, very cool. Very cool. A, a lot more. Uh, 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 what's the word? You gotta send me a couple easier. samples for sure. Oh, definitely. We're, we're we're going through the pilot phase right now. It'll be ready um, within the next month. It 2016. It, it's called Alatura Revitalize, and it's it's what I do. But I, I just I, I took my most effective ingredients. And just made it. And I'm gonna be putting it in a capsule form that are, um, for me, the most important thing or most effective and most important. So actually, uh, I think this is, a, this is a great point to to t for you to take me through your morning routine. So let's. What, what is it yeah. normal? Because Jordan actually told me that you're this yeah. uh, high yeah, jolt so person in the morning. Yeah, it's. Uh, he's seen it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's just uh, it's it's just what I do to uh, to get myself into that flow. So I'll. I'll do the morning tonic and then head over to my inversion table and inversion table. Not only after my accident, I was really bunched. My lower back was just really tight uh, from head to toe. I was in a ton of pain. What is an inversion table? How, do, how does it look like? So you, it's uh, you flip up side down. You're just literally inverted. Your head is, it just, you know, you, you strap yourself in okay. and you, uh, you're upside down. I like to, you know, nice calming, soothing music, usually Sade in the background. And I have my morning tonic that's, you know, starting to get that blood flowing and that, uh, that circulation from head to toe. And, uh, you know, I heard this the other day that gravity is constantly working against us. And I like to counteract that with the inversion table daily. And not only from circulation, but to lengthen out and get that blood flowing, that circulation in my discs and my back. I just, my posture has gotten a lot better. I feel like I've gotten a little taller and, um, it's seriously, I mean, it's just, uh, that's just what I do. And I, I spring up from that, make my bulletproof coffee and I'm good to go. You want to talk about being in a flow state. I mean, I just tackle my emails, got the music going. I mean, that's, that's what puts me in a flow state. Um, I got a lot of things that I do and that just makes me feel great. Um, you know, every other day I'll be, I'll have my mask on and, and, um, that's another thing that I do. I know we're talking a lot about the mask, but and I swear I'm not like trying to pump my price. It's just what I do, and it's what works. You know, this, I, I think it's, it's a really interesting story, and you you came up with it. 
you know, for yourself, like, like yeah. you said before, you know, you, you, you were scratching your own itch. And now uh, I'm really interested in digging into how you came up with it. And that's why we're talking so much about it. So I think everyone listening right now, they, they want to know and they want to find, you know, solutions for them uh, to have better skin and, and so on. And this is one and this is what we're focusing on now. So this is okay. Yeah, it's just, it's like you said, it, I created it out of necessity. I never once, I was, you know, I've been mixing this mask for years, wondering what I was going to do uh, in my life. So I had no I, no intention of ever making this a product. I just, I, I you know, like I said, I wanted to be an actor or an athlete. And I, I still feel like I uh, will get back into the entertainment industry once this business starts taking over itself. It is a passion of mine. It is exciting. I love doing it. I think, I think, you know, I, I believe that, you know, I can uh, do some more. Uh, I can still see you in a soap opera or something like that, or well, no, hopefully in a Hollywood movie. What's that? You were in a soap <laughs> opera in which one? Yeah, I was on Days of Our Lives for a little bit, Bold and Beautiful. Um, oh, we have to include yeah. that. I have to find a clip from you. Oh, I definitely, they're <laughs> out there. If you, uh, yeah, they're, they're hilarious. One of, one of them is on my Instagram if you want to check out one of my finer mode <laughs> yeah it's i don't believe it. i don't take myself too seriously with that stuff it was just something that kind of made my sisters laugh it was like it was one of their favorite shows growing up and i really want to get on uh, general hospital because it's my mom's favorite show and it's just it's fun you know it's exciting you know when, when you're when for me when i'm when i'm doing stuff like that whether it's commercial work uh i did some stuff on hbo for like entourage hello ladies and stuff like that i've, I've worked you like, were an entourage uh yes yeah, small small role Oh, awesome, uh, yeah. man! Yeah, what cool. what what is it? Uh, I li I like to talk more about that. What is exciting about acting for you? Just, well, I'll tell you what. Being uh, with this the show that only did a couple seasons on HBO called Hello Ladies, uh, just being like walked in from a production assistant, you know, with the headset on, all right, idiot, and then having like a room full of extras and just that adrenaline rush of being like the a principal actor in a principal scene with guys like Stephen Merchant that that I had watched on uh, on in movies, you know, several times, and having Gene Stepnitsky or and these writers from bad teacher that a movie that I love, like in having them kind of critique me, like that's exciting to me. It's, it's like, and it's, that's what I'm all about. You know, excitement translates into passion and, uh, yeah. and that's, that's, they're usually, you know, almost synonymous with each other. And so if so I'm excited, you know, it's, I'm definitely, you know, passionate about it. that's something I, you know, I'm, uh, I'd like to get back into maybe down the road. I just, it was like homework for me. It, it really, uh, I didn't, you know, studying certain roles that weren't me to a T, that's what class is for. I just didn't, it was like, you know, it was like homework for me and I, you got to put work into anything that you want to be great at. So I just didn't want to put in that work. And uh, then I got into the accident, but I, I still, I still did work a lot and it was, uh, it's, it's incredible. And I'll probably get back into it and we'll see what happens, man. I'm, I'm who knows? You know, I can feel that passion because just now when you, when you started talk, to talk about acting i could feel that spark and something lit <laughs> yeah. up you, you, uh, you, you it, like that you're oh it's when you're on set with a bunch of other creative people that and draw driven people that in such a competitive atmosphere and you're all you all won you're on that set you won you booked it you auditioned for it they selected you and you're just creating something awesome that's exciting that you can show your family that the whole world is going to see that i mean how can you complain? I mean, I, I, there have been sets. I did a commercial for Michelob Ultra on the beach in Malibu. You're sitting there, sun's coming down. You're doing a commercial. You're getting who knows how. I mean, it's it's good money. I mean, but on top of that, you're just like around a lot of happy people that are creating something that's it's exciting. You know, it, it excites me, and um, that's what it's all about. I love you know I love doing that. I don't love auditioning. Uh, so auditioning meaning like going out for the part. Uh, I don't love that part of it, but it's part of it. So, uh, I got to get over that if I want to get, get back into it and I will, but, um, but who knows, you know, it's amazing guessing. because you were able to connect also these two industries, which are very related. I'd say, you know, skincare and, and that's, being in front of the camera. Yeah. That's interesting. You bring that up because that that's a big part of how I was able to 
to work, uh, I feel like, uh, pick up work a lot in, in like the modeling and, and entertainment industry in the beginning, because you got to look like your pictures. A lot of guys, a lot of people have great pictures and then you go into the room and then say on a Monday after a long weekend, you kind of, you know, maybe didn't, you know, do so well, uh, nutritionally ate some different things. I mean, I stayed extremely disciplined with my uh, routine over the weekend going into that audition. Discipline for me always equals, uh, results. Uh, staying disciplined with a routine, staying disciplined with social life. That's how I, and then skincare was a part of that routine. And I just did, and it, I, I really, you know, it's so competitive out here physically. I just got to, I just, I felt like controlling what I can control nutritionally, uh, skincare wise. That's how I, I was going to, you know, I got to give myself the best opportunity to succeed. And that was, that's how I did it. Yeah. yeah. So let's say on a day of a shooting, everything is prepared. You've done your mask, you've eaten right, you look great. But then you have that moment where the camera switches on and you have to perform. Do you have any, method in order to get into that or does it just come naturally to you oh it's just it just yeah that's kind of like a blackout moment when you're just in that zone they call action you just go i don't you know i mean i don't really i don't even you know i overthought like my lines and luckily it just it worked out but believe me um it's funny when i'm on set i'm usually really good uh with just remembering lines but when i'm in the casting director it's just me and one person and that's when i get all twitchy and nervous and stuff and but uh it's but that, that you know a major league baseball player reminded me um where he's like when, when you're feeling those nerves just embrace it because you're doing what you love i mean it, you know it's just uh you know work with those nerves embrace those nerves embrace that like that that feeling and um And that makes made a lot of sense to me coming from him. I mean, just in a stadium of 50,000 people watching him and versus Arnold, right, Arnold right. Chapman throwing 103 miles an hour. It's like if he can do it and that's what he says, I'm going to I'm going to implement that and whatever makes me, you know, you know, feel, you know, you're alive, you know, those embrace those nerves. So, but yeah, it, I've seen your, I've seen your, th some of your throws, uh, on, on YouTube, I think, and it's quite <laughs> impressive. Like Thank you. Uh, were, were you close to becoming pro? Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I got, I got every opportunity. Best baseball world. player. We're talking about baseball, by the way, for to all the listeners, right? So yeah, it's no, not I, so big I, here in Germany, but uh, it's one of the big four sports I'd say in the States, right? Probably number one Absolutely. or two. Yeah, baseball, basketball, uh, NFL football, um, soccer. Yeah, you know, I'm a baller. I played for Boston University. You what? I played uh, basketball for Boston University. Oh, did you? I did, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that explains how were you, six, seven? Yeah, I was six, seven, yeah. Nice. Yeah, now nah, nah, you're tall, man. I was 6'7", 235 when I played there. Now I'm about 220, so I lost some weight. Yeah, me too. I used to be 216. I'm like... 95 now so yeah it's uh that's awesome man did you did you get a chance to to play professionally i did play for one season in germany in the second division though sort of on a semi-pro contract uh -huh. uh, and then i was offered a full-time professional contract but i just didn't think that that was my path you know the nba was my goal and i'm uh, sort of a, an all or no nothing person so yeah. uh, i when i saw that i could probably continue to play for a couple more years but then i would give up on the chance to start you know my own venture and become entrepreneurial and that's just more opportunity yeah. there then i decided to just play recreationally and focus on On new projects in life and that was for for me that was the right, right decision definitely what happened with me in 2008 2007 long story short i booked a movie I, i left college i got my opportunity diamondbacks came out saw me didn't sign me and i was kind of bummed out about that moved down to la long story short booked an independent feature film as a lead in that and it was a college uh, it was a baseball film that ignited the passion for baseball again i signed a contract with the yuma scorpions uh in the fall before i was supposed to report for like winter ball and possibly you know it was a tryout but Uh, it was still, it was a professional league Wow! that wow. Friday I booked, uh, days of our lives. So that whole weekend, I'll never forget. Yeah. 2008, January 28th, something like that. I was supposed to report, but that whole weekend I thought went over, crunched the numbers in my head. Is this worth it? And, uh, it went to either play baseball or to follow my entertainment, uh, to, to follow a career in entertainment in the entertainment industry. And I gave up baseball. So I, I technically walked away for it. I think about it rarely, 
but I still love it, but I don't, it's not like, uh, Oh, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm doing what I love now. And I made a, uh, made the right decision at the time, but I definitely had, had my opportunities. And I, I just, like you, like you said, I, I, um, I followed, I didn't, this is what I was, uh, you know, meant to do. Definitely. Very cool. I, I mean, I still love it. And it's fun watching my friends play and, but I don't ever kick myself wondering what if, because I'm so stoked to be where I'm at. No, I, I can feel that. And, uh, I think, yeah, we, we could talk, you know, for hours about different, you know, passions and things, and then you just yeah. radiate that passion. You have so many interests. I just want to <laughs> only run through a couple more questions because we are approaching, I think the, uh, the time where most people then at least here, you know, shut off. So I want to actually maybe preserve some of the topics for another episode with you at some point, sure. yeah. but, uh, I have a couple more rapid, more rapid fire questions for you, but an interesting one that I sometimes ask is what hundred dollar or less purchase has most positively impacted your life in the last six to 12 months, six, 12 months. So the inversion table wouldn't be in there if it was six or 12 months. Um, Actually, it could be one. one. That, that's really, you know, I, I, got, I have to be careful because some people out there may have back injuries. I would say consult a physician first to say whether or not it's, it's good for you. Inversion table has been amazing for me and for many of my friends. It's just, it's a great way to wake up and get that circulation going, but also really our back and our spine, it, the health of that is so important. My, my, my posture, I used to be a little slumped and now I'm, I'm just like, I've had, excuse me, I've had people compliment me on my posture. I had somebody ask me the other day if I was a dancer. <laughs> That was I had to I had to laugh because I, I've never uh, never heard that one before. But it, she was like, "Oh, your posture is, is so good." Any, anyway, yeah. So inversion okay. tables okay. is very good. Battle rope, you know those battle ropes? Yeah. Like, uh, you can hook around. I keep that in my trunk because I don't really I don't have the chance to go to the the gym as much as I used to. But wherever I am, say I'm coming back to the post office and I have a little bit of daylight going, I'll just hook her around a tree. There's so many different exercises you could do with that, and then go into a push up, body squats body weight squats um that was actually my next question you go into the gym what is you can only do one exercise which one do you do dips dips i love dips <laughs> and it you know because uh not, it, it hits your arms shoulders i guess it's part of your arm um and i think it carves up that little side uh, part of your your chest so i would go dip love dips all right love all right. curls i do the same thing. i don't really That's one thing. Some people ask me to train them, and I, uh, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know the science behind uh, what I do. I just kind of do what feels good. And um, and when I was in college, my my yeah, I, I didn't. I kind of just did my own thing with, with our personal trainers. We had these big workouts written up, and I would just kind of do. do my, I got yelled at because of that several times, but. I just, I just follow what my body, I listen to my body and I follow what, what feels good to me at the time. Love music kind of gives, I, I would say the biggest thing for working out that I would recommend for people is, um, uh, circuit training, high intensity interval training, just going, uh, limit your resting, um, heavier weights, lower reps. And I would say that can, that's going to build strength and then, and then, um, l limit the resting that's going to build uh, cardiovascular activity and really just keep that, that pump going and that, um, you know, that intensity going. Um, all right. Yeah. Okay. One more question. And this one is a little harder, I think, than, than the other ones, but what is something that you believe is correct that other people think is insane? high fat diet, high fat diet. You know, yeah. it, it's, I would say that's, that's the first thing that sticks out to me. I, oh, I, I eat so much fat and I'm, my body is, it responds a good one. so a good much one. better like to that like than, uh, than back, back when, you know, the food pyramid is so backwards. I, I looked up something last night about pancreatic health and they they recommended whole grains, low fat diet. And I just, man, that's so frustrating to me because I disagree. I completely disagree with that. I don't have a degree to back it up, but I have a, you know, my, my own biggest science experiment. I think we all are. And, uh, it's just, it's, it's fueled my energy. It really keeps that slow burning fire lit all day. Fat does. I mean, if I were to overload my body with carbs, 
doesn't matter what it is outside of sweet potatoes that's about it that's all i do car- carbohydrate wise and even that you know is just like it, it's it's a little bit of a superfood yeah is what i'm on the same kind of diet i'm, I'm very you know right. high fat on the almost ketogenic diet yeah. Uh, yeah. once in a while i really think that uh, there is so much that people can improve by adding more f- good fats and you know cutting out carbs and sugars so i'm totally with you on that one that's a great one avocado right. coconut you know good fatty grass-fed steaks if you if you eat meat that's my that's that's my go-to i mean it's just anything that can i mean after a long day it's just amazing you, you combine a nice nutrient-dense meal how it lifts you up and wakes you up and it wakes up every cell in your body that's that's pretty profound and it's 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 nutrition i, I got my you know so many different things that, that I could talk about right now. That I love to do. <laughs> we'll keep that for another episode. But I think for now, you know, Andy, there are probably a lot of people that now want to find out more about you. Where can they find you? Uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Alitura Naturals, A L I T U R A Naturals, N A T U R A L S uh, dot com. And then um, yeah, I mean, it's all me. I'm, I'm starting to hire people and expand and we're in 38 countries now. Wow. It, it's great. Yeah. No, it's yeah. Out of my little apartment, man. <laughs> Fantastic. Congrats on that one. That's great. And keep, keep going. You have so much passion. You have to share it with the world. That's what you're, lot, I appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity. I, you know, I love doing this. So let's let's do it more often. I'm down. I love that. Down. And next time I'm in, in LA, I want to work out with you. That's for sure. <laughs> all right. Guys, I'll hear you next time. Thank you guys for listening. This is the end of my conversation with Andy, but don't worry, the next episode is already in the works. And until then, you can find more information on skincare, on diet, on exercise, and on biohacking in general on flowgrade.com. Now, until the next episode, keep the flow.